Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to visiting the most redneck place in America. I feel like this is going to be a positive video. I don't know, but it's got a lot of likes and very few dislikes. So I'm assuming this is a video basically going to this area and just having the time of your life. But I don't know. I've never reacted to this channel before. never seen this channel before. And I mean, I just saw this pop up and thought, yeah, this is the sort of reaction that I want to do. So we are going to do this reaction now. Hopefully you're going to enjoy. And by the end of this, end of this video, maybe you can let me know more about this sort of culture or whatever i'm going to experience here maybe you live your life like this as well i don't know maybe this i don't know i, I actually don't know what to expect so i don't know what i'm saying right now but we're going to check this out links are in the description to my patreon where you can see reactions that i can't post to youtube movies tv series all that good stuff but yeah let's just check this out and see the most redneck place in america oh my God, this is Hello oh, folks, shit. I'm Tommy G. Today I'm in the Lord's country, Eastern Tennessee, Appalachia. My name is Shaka Hustle Man, and in East Tennessee, we will protect these kids. Yay! What the fuck? <laughs> oh, this end is so. Is that your first drink? 12 years old? Yeah, and I smoked my first when I was five. <laughs> Bro, this guy look he looks to me, he looks like Post Malone. A bit of a chubbier version of Post Malone. I might be waffling here, but <laughs> please tell me I'm not the only one who sees it. This guy here. I might just be chatting shit. I smoked my first when I was five. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What do you picture when you think of the most redneck place in America? Perhaps you picture rural Alabama or somewhere near the Florida Everglades. What I picture is Eastern Tennessee, located smack dab in Appalachia. This place is country, the Lord's country. Here you're liable to find a gun in damn near every house, and it's not uncommon to still spot a Confederate flag flying. It's a place where gas stations sell an awful lot of chewing tobacco, and the boys in this town drive trucks. In this episode, I meet with local resident rapper Shaka Hustle Mine. Here's what this kid sounds like. Get this stick like I'm bound to make a spear. What? I knock your ass straight the fuck up out of here. Pussy talking shit. Oh he shit. Clear. Step through the creek like I'm running from bloodhounds. It's a fun town. You get gunned down. Yeah. To the world, I'll be sick of this syphilis. The mark of the beast when I reminisce. In this episode, <laughs> we shoot guns. Get I've never heard of rap in that accent and I, i'm low-key liking it i don't know why that sounds that actually sounds good i don't know if he's actually like well known or what but maybe he's got a career maybe he's big in in the appalachian area i'm not sure i don't know the mud on our boots and meet the local folks everything you see is for educational purposes only <laughs> let's giddy up <laughs> 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 What's up, y'all? Shaka Hustle, man. Welcome to East Tennessee. Man. We're gonna show you about how it is, how we live, what it is, and we're gonna tell you the truth about this place. When it comes to Tennessee as a whole, I feel like we're one of the last states that's uh, really sticking to the true American way of life that our founding fathers set it up for us. East Tennessee is one I mean, of the- For Appalachia, this place looks quite nice. I mean, the neighborhood that I'm seeing here looks pretty decent because I've done reactions to Appalachia before and it's always quite bad, just in terms of like, just basically just the homes that people living in are falling apart and there's no so there's no like maybe electricity in certain areas or whatever it is um but this area looks quite nice that he was in few places you'll go where somebody will walk up with their pants sagging and some cowboy boots on and be like howdy homeboy what's up my homie blah, blah, blah. and i'm a rapper everybody always has this stigma around rappers that uh they freaking live the party lifestyle and stuff but really i just be fixing trucks and cutting grass and painting walls that's really what it is but is this I mean, your baby right fun. here yeah this so this right here it's a 1979 scottsdale it says it's k10 but it's k20 you can see she's a little muddy right now we got wild over the weekend Around here, it's either people who take the route of getting on drugs. I mean, there's an in-between, obviously. But people either take the route of getting on drugs or uh, they go out and they have fun with what they got. And around right here, we know how to fix stuff. We know how to work on stuff. And we put our trades to fun. Fentanyl epidemic has taken over this area like nothing you've ever seen. But one of my closest family members, she's uh, recently got on fentanyl. And this is somebody that we never, ever thought would even dabble in drugs. Done got evicted. She's got her car repoed and stuff. And 
that she's scared she'll die if she quits. But the thing is, I'm scared she'll die if she keeps doing it. I went to prison in 2015. There was so much dope that almost everybody you knew was selling dope or on dope. And it's dope, man. Yeah. Okay. And then whenever I came home, it was such an epidemic. I came home in 2019 and I got on it. My baby mother, her sister, just died from fentanyl. Her dad, come to find out, was the one that had gave it to her. He had bought it from somebody oh and gave it to her days. and she passed. He got charged with second degree murder. The dealer and his girl got charged with second degree murder, but the one dealer was coaching a youth football team Jeez. and they knew that he was selling fit enough. My stepbrother, I ain't seen him in 10 years and I caught up with him at the corner store. We ran into each other and caught up. Next day he was dead because he took a pill and it killed him. Next, we were invited to the top of the hill to the Diesel Dicks headquarters for a rip roaring shindig. Hey, we are 11 minutes out. <laughs> it's a rip roaring shindig. <laughs> I love that phrase. I don't even know what it means, but I love that phrase. <laughs> the sponsor of today's video is Opera Desktop, the browser. Opera's everywhere, man. I mean, look, he's secure in the bag. He'd love to see it. I'm going to, I mean, look, links will be in the description to his video. I'm just going to get to it. Yep, there you go. If you're interested in helping this guy's channel out, you know what to do. That's why I recommend you download Opera Desktop and give it a try. It's free. Link is in the description. Back to the video. We're excited, man. We're really excited. Mm -hmm. I'll come down to the bottom of the driveway here about five minutes. All right, thank you, man. Y'all better tighten up. We're going uphill this time. Let's go. All right, just follow me. We're almost there. You ready? Bro, what oh, a life, man. Goats over there. Where are we right now? Right now we're in Stony Creek. And it's safe to say that that's in Appalachia. Yeah, we're in the bottom part of Appalachia. I don't know if you're affiliated with a gang, but we're with the Diesel Dicks. Yeah, we're with the Diesel Dick gang. Right I know you see, you see the truck on the back, that truck sitting over yonder. But yeah, that's what we do. We spin tires, we break shit, we fix it, and we can turn up. <laughs> I like the belt buckle. That's some high fashion. Right there. <laughs> hey, listen, bro. Some old man made that shit for me. My wife would love me if I dressed like that. She. <laughs> hey, you better lock her up. I if I'm around. <laughs> if I had an Appalachian Jesus. stereotype, one would be that people can fix just about anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And two is that they like to tinker. Yeah. Like they got a bunch of cars. They got a bunch of stuff. Is that an accurate that's, stereotype? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's the name of the game. It's what I enjoy doing. And even if I had a million dollars, I'd still be out here tinkering with my toys and stuff. Do you guys feel represented by our current government right now? I feel like there's only one politician that I feel like I can trust, and that's the man that tells it straight, and y'all already know who that is. Hillary Clinton? Uh, no, we're talking about Trump. <laughs> we're talking about goddamn Hillary Clinton. Shut the hell up. <laughs> I support Trump because he's the only person that I feel like has brought the whole American movement forward, so, you know, the whole MAGA movement shit. But, dude, any politicians in general, it's just like we don't know them people. What is success mean to you? Wake up, do what you want every day. The life we're living. Yeah. Is there any lingo I should be learning if I'm trying to blend in a little bit more? You gotta say y'all. Y'all? Yeah, yonder, you gotta say out yonder in the holler. How far is yonder? Right here, over there. <laughs> and if you hear somebody around here say uh, yesterday, you know, this happened the other day or whatever, that could be any time from now and <laughs> six months ago, you know? That don't Dude, mean shit. The funniest thing around here when somebody in the holler or something gives you directions. They're never using street names and shit. They're using landmarks. Go north as far as the hill, then take a right. Yeah. John Boyd's truck right here is locally famous. John Boyd, tell him about your truck. Show him, I guess. Are you making a barbecue in here, or where is all this? Oh, wow. Flipping hell. You gotta drive that home. You're supposed to tell us about it. <laughs> Oh, you ever burned up? I've never burned out in. in my life. Get in. Can the car blow up if I do this? I mean, it ain't going to like hurt nobody. It's fine. Don't worry about it. All right. We only got one tire left. We, we only have one tire on this truck? Well, I mean, it's got two, but the one's popped. <laughs> All right, right here is good. Give it quite a bit of break and start easing in the throttle. Oh, crap, it'll blow up. Give me a floor. Oh, my. It's going to pop. Keep going. Hold it to the floor. I'm going to give it a second. Did I just explode you, a tire? You, you sure did. You wanna get out like? Holy f 
Oh my god. Good rubber. He just broke up. We gotta have a moment of silence. I mean, we's all riled up, but. Let's see what you got. I'ma walk me a hundred miles. I'ma do the dirt and I'ma handle work every day. I'ma slow down. Here we go now. Then relocate the whole straight to a face. I'm serious. Come around and get curious. I'ma put my little bitch in a years. I'ma sit on my family tears and still before mine, I'ma sit on all yours. Come from a different cloth. I'm a fly like a mountain. Y'all just get you off the block. Oh my God. <laughs> You want a drink? I'll take a little. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Tommy G. Yeah. I'm drunker than f <laughs> But I'll tell you what. Uh -huh. F them. It's the important lesson because, listen, dude, people are going to f with your ass. And if you just say f them, it ain't going to bother you, man. Hey, That's listen. I was 12 years old and I threw up on Maple because my daddy said, You think you're a goddamn man? Go ahead. Go ahead. Was that your first drink, 12 years old? Yeah, and I smoked my first blunt when I was five. <laughs> <laughs> when people think a rapper in their head, you're not the first image that they stereotype. Do you think you can change that? And do you think the game is missing some new flavor? Rap is so broad. Anybody who can talk can rap. You, there's a stereotype around us. Like, I, I got you on the next one, one more. That we're a bunch yeah. of, there's a stereotype around us yeah, that we're a bunch of one. dumb hillbillies. But anybody can come up here tonight and have fun. <laughs> Here we, go. we got a goddamn Paris! Oh, I'm good. <laughs> That's how you earn respect a lot of times up here. What percentage of people have guns in their house? There's a gun above every door in my house. It'd be easier to talk about the percentage of people that ain't got a gun in their house. <laughs> what the f if somebody was to break in, what the f you gonna do? If you throw him down, he gonna get back up, shoot your ass. And when you got kids, it makes a yeah, different thing. Once you, you have a kid, young you dude. gotta keep a gun. You call the goddamn police, they gonna be there in 10 to 20 minutes. You got a goddamn 12 gauge, that motherfucker gonna be there right now. <laughs> What's that tattoo on your knuckles, man? Right this, R-H-E-C, raise hell and eat cornbread, dude. I got the state of Tennessee. I got this shit done in a kitchen, bro. F yeah, this was done in the kitchen. This shit was done in a fucking trailer run by a generator. The stereotypes from outside of this state ain't right. People take up for each other no matter what skin color, no matter where you're from. What do you think the stereotypes are? People act like a lot of mountaintop hick people and stuff in our area are incest, drug addicted, Ra racist. Yeah, yeah racist. I, I got a, a kid with a white girl. <laughs> yeah, my mom's black, dude, believe it or not. Like, there ain't nothing to it. Skin color ain't nothing different than your hair color, bro. Genetics is genetics. We're all human beings. There's shitty human beings and good human beings in every race, hair color, state. No matter what it is, bro, trying to split this nation up. When the people come together and unify, that's when the government gets scared of us, dude. Look at 1776. Woohoo! Yeah. Alright, folks. It's time to go to sleep. We'll see you in the morning. I think we're about to hang out with what they call the Tennessee Taliban. I don't know. I have to ask Jesus them. But uh, we're going to make sure our ears are protected. Tennessee we're going to get some earplugs and some watermelon and some fruits that we can chew. Let's get it. Bitch, 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 Smoke some. I, I, I'm bringing the shit for real. I'm fucking it up because that's how I feel. I hear Tennessee is one of the best states for gun law rights. I'm originally from Southern California, so okay. moving here, it's definitely a breath of fresh air. What is the gun culture like here? You know, the Second Amendment is very, like, open and not restricted. Coming from a pretty rough area in Southern California, it's definitely a blessing that I can carry and don't have to jump through hoops and steps like that. Do you think it's something that Americans should protect and fight for? A hundred percent. thousand percent. We got our earplugs, we got our butt plugs, we're ready to shoot. A country boy, now I'm a country king. Tennessee has some of the most pro gun, pro Second Amendment gun laws in the United States, so we decided to get educated and learn more about the gun culture here. Now, now I run a whole hundred 
Quick as a bitch. So what are the gun laws like in Tennessee? They're easy. It's called constitutional carry. As a Tennessee resident, you have the right with a driver's license to conceal or open carry any weapon within the state. And that goes from pistol to shotgun to AR Anything. to... Anything. How do you um, prove that I'm not crazy, that you're not putting... You it? have to pass a background check. You answer all these questions on this form. If you do not answer truthfully, it's a felony. And then from these, this, I run your background. And it goes through five different divisions. Are you a fugitive from justice? I'm not, but you are, right? <laughs> yeah. Just like anything, like 99% of people that buy guns are going to be good gun-holding people, but then there's the crazies, the Columbines. How do you stop that from happening? Well, you can't really stop it from happening if somebody's going to come in and lie about it, but we pretty much have a good idea. We have the right to refuse anybody to buy a gun. We just had somebody that signed up to take a class with us. We didn't feel comfortable with the individual, and we gave her our money back and won't even let her take the class. They were twitching a little too much. I went to a gun safety class recently. I got my concealed carry, but I'm scared to buy one because I sleepwalk sometimes and I don't want to wake up and accidentally take out my family. But I kind of do want a pistol. I live in Milwaukee where it's a little... But <laughs> I have dreams sometimes where I, like someone's in my house and I'm running to go get them. I don't want to accidentally wake up and in the middle... You know what I mean? No. No? Hey, we probably refuse to sell you a gun. Okay, okay. <laughs> we left this gun store and met up with Shaka and his friends to shoot completely legal guns. Thank you, YouTube. So what do we got on the table here? This is a Palmetto State dagger. These are my carry guns right here. These are also Glocks. But this right here is a well, Glock I just 19. Find this is my home defense. It's like a lot of their life is are based around guns. Like they'll just do a lot of stuff based around guns. And obviously this is a different part of the world, right? But it's just so alien. <clears throat> alien to me. Obviously, having guns is what one thing, but like, like lives being sort of so. I'm not gonna say that lives are revolve around guns, but a lot of it is, and it's just a fascinating difference. I mean, I'm just so unused to this, but this is their lives, man. This is what you're growing up around. So I mean, I I get it. It's just something I'm not used to, you know. Because it's got the laser and the flashlight. And they'd feel the same if they lived in my country and like sort of they lived their life, but then they came to the UK and lived here. These guys would absolutely hate it. So, I mean, it's just what people are used to, right? It's just differences like that. It was actually given to me by somebody who was murdered literally a week after they gave us to me. How young were you when you shot your first gun? Probably like five or six, maybe four. I was shooting an AK-47 when I was, uh, uh, before I could even ride a bicycle. What does the right to bear arms mean to you? Well, it's an infringable right given to us by the Constitution, so it explains it in itself. Now, I can understand people's fears about training and everything else. You can go out and get proper training. It's not expensive. There's plenty of people around that know what they're doing. They can teach everybody. May we drink a little bit before we start shooting? Yeah, have you guys got some Bud Lights we could drink? Ah, get the f out of here. Firearms and alcohol and Denver mix. Do you feel like uh, Bud Light goofed up big time with their, some of their recent advertising? Mm, yeah. I mean, I ain't never been in a bar and seen a freaking transgender man sipping beer, <laughs> drinking beer, you know what I mean? <laughs> when I was in fourth grade, they took us on a field trip to a place called Camp Explorer, and we'd shoot bows and guns when we were in fourth grade everybody. with our teachers, dude, really? shooting guns. Oh. Who's gonna shoot first? Oh, I got this ready. Right here. I was a country boy, now I'm a country king. king. This year I'm serving fans, last year I was serving fiends. Now I'm living dreams, bitch get out of my way. I ain't trying to see no <laughs> mic unless I'm getting paid. Getting paid. There it is. Country king. Yeah. Do you feel like this part of the country has been forgotten about a little bit or is underrepresented? I would agree. In all fairness, I feel like the state of Franklin would have been a cool idea if that ever stayed into history. I think the, the state of Franklin. Yeah. Benjamin Franklin. Mm -hmm. They about in the 1800s, so they tried to establish the state of Franklin instead of the state of Tennessee, and it basically just incorporated the entire Appalachian Mountain chain as one state. So I think that would be interesting. I mean, Tennessee's an okay state. We've got a decent state government. It's been all right. Could be do better. Do you feel like board. you're represented under the Biden administration? Well, no, not really. I mean, food prices, gas prices, unemployment, the debacle that is the southern border, the things they're doing in our educational system to our children, none of it's good. I've had some personal experiences in some of that. I went down to the southern border. I was on a border task force, I'll just leave it at that, went down there and partnered with Texas, CPS and National Guard, and did some work, and it's, I saw your video on it, it's a disaster down there, you know as well as I do. We captured 2,300 people in 19 days, and four miles stretch of border and I would say about 85% was military age males and out of that 2300 after their process 750 ish were already convicted uh, files right Child inside the United States. Because Trump said a controversial statement that they're not sending us their, their best, they're sending us their criminals, their best. But from one third of the people you got, you'd say are on that category. One third just via 
paperwork. Not everybody. There was good folks down there. I really didn't see that many women and children. I saw a couple groups, at least the shift I worked. I worked from 05 till noon, about lunchtime. But it's all military age males. Are you proud to be an American? Of course. And do you feel like we're losing that in this country? Sadly, yeah. There's still a good core of people that are happy to be here, happy to be left alone. That's the big thing. Everybody just wants to be left alone. People just want to be left alone and allowed to have guns down their jeans, huh? <laughs> Akimbo! This is my message to Joe Biden. You come try here, come to my property, man. Shout out in a small town. Joe Byron. Yay! Yeah, yeah! Wait, the flashes, the flashes from his gun are real. I thought they were just edited, bro. What is that gun? Jesus Christ. In these videos, I love meeting absolute characters. This next scene, we get to go to Kirk Dog's house, and this guy is an Appalachian legend. We're in Kingsport, Tennessee, beautiful slice of paradise oh, in northeast Tennessee. This is no place like home. I've been a lot of places, and uh, you know how birds and stuff navigate through magnetism of the earth? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, my magnetism feels right right here. <laughs> so I hear you're someone of a genius. By day, what do you do? What's your profession? Uh, right now, I actually work for the uh, U.S. Army uh, making explosives at the uh, Holston Defense. You must be damn good if they let you in with all your tattoos. Well, you know, with a degree and a great work history, the possibilities are endless. Uh, that's the big house where me and my wife live. And the kids, you see a lot of uh, gro overgrown trucks and uh, weeds around here. This is a Jeep that I was just given. We're gonna basically turn it We're, into- Was that a birthday gift or a Christmas <laughs> gift? <laughs> just a random, like I need it out of my area. It's got a good motor. But what goes down in here? That's just the farmhouse. When we have little shindigs like we do today, people go in there. We got couches, sit, lounge, hang out. This is honestly the dream is to have a lot of land, yeah. peace and quiet. This is a place that the, the crickets is, chirp at night, the stars come out. This is uh, the result of uh, deciding to make a a lot of good choices along the way at a, probably a little later than most uh, about 27 i got my head out of my rear and uh worked went back to college got my degree what up caleb it seems like in these parts having a gun on you is like having underwear on you <laughs> everywhere i go when i'm not going to work <laughs> do you feel like this part of the country is overlooked or underrepresented underrepresented in a positive light i feel like a lot of the focus is on the negative because there's not a whole lot here going on except for you know you know, got music city over in nashville and all that you know this small area you just assume that it's a bunch of dumb rednecks i've never been mudding properly before in my life properly? So, yeah like, oh, you'll probably get it done oh yeah definitely probably here today. today guys as we're waiting to heat things up i should let you know about this i'm creating the largest gain in America. Big dogs got to eat. If you want to join the gang, buy a shirt, TommyJimmyGee.com. I have you covered. Here's another thing about this area. We are superbly globally relevant, as in Eastman makes products that are used all over the world. All the plastics, all the uh, bottles and stuff like that. They I'm so fascinated by this, fascinated by this guy because he seems so goddamn smart, like so smart. And I'm just thinking like, what, <laughs> what are these tattoos about? It's like, I'm just confused, it's like the polar opposite. Uh, but you know what, it's, I, I don't actually care. People can do what they want to do to their body. I'm just fascinated by what they, they actually mean, to be honest, because they're just like lines and stuff. I was sort of trying to look at them. Are they supposed to be like, sort of be like gun targets or something? I have no idea. They make the polymers that they use to do that. They had a big contract with Coca-Cola for years and Kodak. There's a lot of people out there that make this, that make America run, and we're yeah. kind of forget about them a little bit. Uh, they don't think about the, the boots on the ground kind of people, you know? Boots on the ground, that's one of the, the slogans of the channel. I was getting into Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge, that is where they uh, refined the uh, uranium for Fat Man and Little Boy. It's the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Oh, Jeez. that was, yeah. made, in that was made in this area. Like Oak Ridge, they, they built an entire city that was, you know, nobody came in or out, but they did the thing there. They made the, the explosive ordinance that went into that. Yeah. Who wants to show the city boy like me how it's done? Yeah. I'm, I'm in the truck. truck. Hop in the truck. I might <laughs> need to do a little carb tuning. <laughs> I've seen some Confederate symbology around here. Yep. It means something different to people. What does it mean to people? Going all the way back to then, you know, the 
the North kind of controls everything, and South wanted to run their own thing. You know, this slavery thing is terrible, awful. Should have been thrown away a long time ago. But this area shouldn't be governed by them as harshly because they, they, they profit while we make the stuff. You know. Looks like you went hog hunting recently, huh? That's bull. No, I'm talking about hog hunting. Ah, oh. oh. he, he's, he's actually right. Not. <laughs> All right, folks, we went on quite a journey, and the music that you've heard throughout this video is all this guy right here. A couple guys back here, too, but the link is in the description. Blow this guy up. Come and big dogs got to eat. Thank you for the hospitality. Man. Any, any, any final thoughts you got? Man, I just appreciate you coming out here and Thank showing you, love to our people, man. Thank we you. got good people, and you're good people, too, so it's good to get y'all out here and turn up and do a little yee-yee shit. Yee-yee! Guys, yee -yee! Yee -yee! The world is a beautiful place. The media is going to try and tell you it's not, but you can go anywhere to anyone. There's good people. They're trying to breed separation, but when you travel the country, you travel the world, people are friendly, people are wonderful, people are kind, and I experienced that here in East Tennessee and Appalachia. Love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Peace. Y'all have a good one. I enjoyed this, man. This was a good, this is some good fun. Don't get me wrong, culture shock to say the least. Like, it's completely different, but I just love seeing the differences in how people live their lives, man. You could do you could do a video like this in somewhere like California, you'll get a completely different experience. You could go somewhere like Florida, completely different experience. Go somewhere like Ohio, completely it's just different. And this is just within the US and go to other countries, it's opening up other horizons as well. But I really enjoyed this and I mean, yeah, let me know your thoughts on this. I guess some of you will be from here. Uh, maybe not this specific region, but just this area. And yeah, I guess some of you may live your lives just like this. But yeah, hopefully you did enjoy this. And yeah, until next time, I subscribe. Peace.